Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Copied Factory. This is the first Alliance raid made available by patch 5.1 in Final Fantasy XIV, Vows of Virtue, Deeds of Cruelty. Some of you will approach this with laser focus, while others might go into robot mode. But no matter what, together we will mark smash it out of the park. My name is Ms. Tech and I'll be your raid guide. The raid immediately leads us into the first boss encounter with the Serial Jointed Command Model. The systematic siege will bring down a number of ads around the outer edges of the platform that will slowly bombard the platform with lethal orbs as they move around the edge. Players will have to constantly be on the lookout for these orbs and move out of their paths to avoid damage. Clanging Blow will deal high damage to the primary target. Cool down and shield through this as necessary. Energy Bombardment will target the ground with AoE Circle Blast that all players should avoid. Forceful Impact will deal high raid-wide damage. Healers be ready to top everyone off. Periodically, the boss will turn towards a random player and cast Energy Assault, bombarding the platform in that direction with a multitude of orbs. Players will need to quickly move behind the boss during this time to avoid unnecessary damage. Systematic targeting will spawn more ads around the platform that will laser target random players before blasting in their direction. To minimize damage and overlap of the raid, these players can force the blast away from the raid or towards the outside of the platform. Side striking spin will target each side of the boss for high damage and debuffs. When you see this cast, make sure you're either in front, behind, or out of range of the attack completely. Systematic airstrike will summon a number of flying ads above the platform. These ads will follow the paths indicated by the arrows on the platform, dropping lethal orbs as they do. All players will need to make sure that they're out of the path of these dropped orbs or they will probably die. Systematic suppression will summon multiple sets of ads on the edge that will blast across one half of the platform in succession. Players will have to move out of the first blast before repositioning to avoid the subsequent blast pattern. The location of these ads is random, so be sure to keep an eye out for the order of the spawns. From here on out, these mechanics will repeat with increased overlap and difficulty. Additionally, players will now need to be on the lookout for Shockwave, which will knock them away from the boss. This can overlap with the airstrike, so I highly recommend using knockback immunities to spare yourself that extra headache. Lastly, the boss will throw out growing rings of orbs that must be avoided as necessary. Getting hit by any of these attacks throughout the encounter will place a vulnerability stack on you, so make sure to avoid everything as much as possible. This next section has us battling a number of trash mobs. The hardest part is constantly watching out for all the moving orbs while also dodging the usual AoE attacks. The second boss is Hobbs. Each alliance will be sent to a specific platform that has its own special mechanic to look out for throughout the encounter. Alliance A will have a number of ads beneath the platform that will throw out AoE patterns in a line to dodge. Alliance B's platform has a conveyor belt system that will push players left and right. Alliance C's platform will have vents that throw out alternating AoE blasts. These are all fairly easy to handle, but they will overlap with other mechanics throughout the encounter, so be ready. Hop starts off by casting Laser Resistance Test, dealing high raid-wide damage in multiple hits. Healers beware. Anytime this laser targets the back of a platform, it signifies the beginning of a mini phase. The mechanics of each mini phase depends on the position of the platform around the room. If the big stationary claw is over the platform, players will need to prepare for a rotating cone and circle AoE. You can tell the direction this attack is rotating by the directional arrows in the center. Start in a safe zone and follow it around as the attack turns. Make sure you avoid the blue puddle in the middle as well. If you're on the platform with a smaller mobile claw, a proximity-based damage marker will appear in the center of the platform, and players will need to move to the edges to avoid excess damage. This attack will eventually drop down a large box that will break open, crushing any players in its way. Inside the box will be four ads that will tether to random players. These ads will explode if they get within range of their targets. To handle this, each player can move away from the group to only take one explosion. You can also have a tank grab all four tethers and cool down through the explosions at once. If flamethrowers light up the back of the platform, players will need to quickly position themselves either in the middle or one of the sides of the platform to avoid the incoming blast, based on the position of the lit flamethrowers. All three of these mini phase mechanics occur at the same time on each platform, but each alliance will be dealing with a different mini phase each round. Once the mini phase is complete, the entire room will rotate and each platform will land in a different section. As soon as that big red laser targets your platform, be ready to handle the incoming mechanics. Ring Laser will form an AoE attack that begins on the outer
outer edge of the platform and moves into the middle. Players will need to dodge each ring as it makes its way to the center, or they'll take high damage and be afflicted with stacking magic vulnerability debuffs. Laser Sight will mark up a player with this lineup marker. The Alliance will need to stand together to share the incoming damage. Once each Alliance has gone through all three platform mini phases, the specific mechanics to each platform will begin to overlap with the previous mechanics. This can get pretty hectic, especially if it's your first time, but with practice, all of these attacks are fairly easy to dodge. Periodically, players will be marked for large AoE circles that need to be spread apart to avoid overlapping damage. All of these mechanics will repeat with increased overlap and difficulty until the boss is down. In the next section, we come across the Goliath tank. This is actually the first of two mini boss trash adds that you'll need to defeat before moving on to the third boss. Energy Ring will deploy a number of lethal orbs around the boss in a growing AoE ring. This repeats until the boss is down, so put on your dodging shoes. A number of adds will spawn and tether to random players. These adds will run towards their targets and explode, so be sure to move these away from the ray to avoid overlapping their explosions. Laser Turret will have the tank turning towards a random player and blasting in that direction. Move out of the AoE telegraph. These mechanics will repeat until the tank is destroyed. Next, the raid will have to deal with a hacked flight unit. Area Bombing Maneuver will mark up players with orange markers and target them with small AoE circle blasts that will follow them for some time. Make sure you move out of these as necessary. 360 degree Bombing Maneuver will deal high raid-wide damage. Healers be ready to top everyone off. Light Fast Blade will target one side of the boss for a massive blast. Move to the opposite side to dodge. At this point, these mechanics will happen more frequently and with more overlap until the flight unit is defeated. Finally, we reach the third boss. Mark Smash will target one half of the platform and players will need to look at the boss's movements to see which side will be affected. Move to the opposite half of the platform to avoid the attack. Precision Guided Missile will target the three tanks of each alliance for heavy hitting AoE blasts. The tanks need to make sure they're far away from each other and the rest of the raid to avoid overlap. Incendiary Bombing will mark up players and blast the ground beneath them with high damage that leaves behind a fire puddle. Move these markers away from the group to minimize damage. Guided Missile will mark up the players with these special AoE markers and target them for AoE blasts that will follow them for some time. If you're affected, be sure to move away from the raid and continue moving until the AoE blasts stop chasing you. Diffuse Laser will deal high raid-wide damage. Healers beware. The next Mark Smash has the boss winding up with both hands. If he raises both arms high up into the air, the south side of the platform will be targeted, followed by both east and west sides. Players will need to dodge this attack by moving to the center section of the north side of the platform. If he raises both arms but keeps them close to his body, the north side of the platform will be targeted first, followed by the center being blasted. To dodge this attack, players will move to the south side of the platform and position on the outer edge to avoid the secondary middle blast. Energy Barrage will call down a number of circles that must be soaked on the north side of the platform. At the same time, the boss will blast the area directly in front of him. To handle this, all players will move out of the center, but be ready to move right back into the soak circles as soon as the attack goes off. If you miss soaking the damage from any of the circle attacks, they will explode and you will probably die, so make sure there's a player standing in each one. Surface Missile will randomly target the platform for large AoE blasts. Move out of these areas as necessary. Eventually, the boss will begin to charge and a number of adds will drop onto the platform. Each alliance will handle one of the Goliath adds, tanking them away from each other to avoid buffing them. The smaller adds will eventually explode, so healers be ready for that extra damage. The Goliath adds will throw out large AoE cones that should be avoided. All of the adds must be destroyed destroyed before the boss hits 100 on his gauge. Stack shield and heal through the incoming ultimate blast. Eventually, a proximity-based damage marker will appear on the center of the platform. The raid is going to need to move to the south edge, as the platform will soon be destroyed and everyone will be flung off. By standing on the south side, you'll be flung onto the second platform instead of the abyss. From here on out, players will need to keep an eye out on the extra arms on either side that will target one third of the platform with each hit. Move out of their way to avoid high damage and debuffs. All the previous mechanics will continue to repeat as well. Eventually, the boss will begin his crushing protocol and cover the southern half of the platform with fire. The raid will need to destroy each arm before they get crushed. These mechanics will repeat until the boss is down. This takes us right into the final boss, the 9S operated walking fortress. This is arguably the hardest encounter in the game because it's really hard to see what you're doing through your tears. Neutralization will deal high damage to the primary target. Cool down and heal through this as necessary. Laser saturation will deal high
high raid-wide damage. Healers beware. Laser turret will have the boss turn towards a random player and blast in that direction. Move out of the way to avoid unnecessary damage. Next up, players will need to dodge AoE markers on the ground and spread the markers on targeted players to avoid overlap. Dual flank cannons will blast the platform on either side of the boss. Make sure you're standing directly behind or in front to avoid this. Front hind cannons will blast the platform in front and behind the boss. Stand on the boss's sides to avoid. Engage mark support will spawn giant arms in random quadrants of the platform. The raid will need to move to the unaffected quadrant to avoid high damage and debuffs. When 9S casts Undock, he'll move to the center of the room and fly away in his flight unit. The raid will then need to be on the lookout for his bombing pattern and move out of the way of the incoming airstrike missiles. You'll need to survive multiple bombardments before 9S returns. Anti-personnel missile will target random segments of the platform in succession. Players will need to move out of the squares targeted first and then move into the safe zone to avoid subsequent blasts. Engage Goliath tank support will call down two massive tanks on opposite sides of the platform that will tether to the boss and render him invulnerable. The raid will need to destroy these tanks before continuing their assault on the boss. The raid tanks will need to make sure they have threat on each machine tank as they'll blast their primary target with massive damage. Make sure the tanks are faced away from the raid and cool down and heal through as necessary. The raid will need to watch it for AoE circle attacks and raid-wide blasts as they destroy each tank. Once the tanks are destroyed, 9S will hack a tank, forcing it to explode. The raid will need to run behind the other tank to avoid the blast or they will die. This blast will cause the second tank to explode, so be ready to run out of range as quickly as possible. Eventually, 9S will begin hacking and three adds will spawn. Each alliance will need to focus one down as fast as possible while keeping them apart. These adds have similar mechanics to the first boss, so take what you learned there and apply it here. Be sure to stack with your alliance to share the damage and watch out for the side attacks. All three adds must be destroyed before the boss finishes hacking or you will die. Stand in the shield provided and heal through the incoming damage. From this point on, all the main mechanics will repeat with increased overlap and difficulty until the boss is destroyed. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. See you in 5.2. Till next time.